Oops. And we're live. What up? That song, man. <laughs> <laughs> that song is great. There's a whole there's a whole album. They did a whole album of Kanye West's parody Christmas songs. <laughs> it's so um, good. The group is called Local Business Comedy, if anyone wants to look up the full album. There's like I am there's production issues and stuff with like every single song, but they're all funny <laughs> in their own way. And the dude sounds a bit like him. <laughs> it was so good, dude. <laughs> so this is uh, episode number 99 of Frag Logic. Obviously, Christmas is close at hand. Yes. So we are seasonally decorated for the holidays. We're a day away. Seasonally decorated. Whoa. Keep the hat in check. <laughs> <laughs> basically, yeah, we're basically uh, basically a day away. Yep. I'm doing uh, I'm doing my gifts tomorrow night, so are you actually a, actually a day away? Ah, nice, nice. Uh, well, folks, uh, welcome, welcome. Episode ninety nine of Frag Logic, and we get to talk about Halo today. Also, want to talk about the end of the year Destiny stats that were uh, uh, showcased, highlighted, which has been a big mystery, I think, up until this point. Um, I, even still, they they haven't told the active numbers of people playing across the game, which is still fascinating in its own right. But they have actually given the number of people that uh, have played. That does not necessarily indicate uh, a copy soul, but uh, it's still a pretty significant number. Uh, you know, I got I got to give my little shout outs to people that are talking right now. We got I'm actually going to call out some people that are lurking today cuz that don't make no sense. We got Bigness, Mod in the Chats and Kupo, what's up? Father Russia, Teddy, it's Bay. Somebody else is in there. G-Man, Armadillo, Elite, Nemo, Brother Kratos, Big Armada, Gossy, Atmo Pro. It's not actually it's that. Am, no. It's Amto Pro. You got oh, your, uh, Am, Amto Pro. You got your letters switched around. <laughs> okay. I just glanced at that. Giantson, <laughs> San Manuva, uh, Squirrel, and Penny Rich. What up, brethren? What up, brethren? I like the policy uh, of calling out the lurkers. Just saying. Uh, yeah, you know. I, I, I like the I, policy. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I just got to say what's up to everybody. So today, yeah, you know, we're going to be talking about Halo. We got our weekend gaming coming up. Um, I'm actually, as you guys can see, this is a different background. This is actually, if I showed this, I'm going to give a link to you guys to VBI TV. Oh, man. You guys going to see this same background. VBI TV is VBI the TV. oldest of old school. The oldest of old school. I am the originator of the live shows. This is before all those other people blew up. I was doing this shit. I'm going I'm to give you guys a link. But you remember before that? that VBI Radio, <laughs> the VBI <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we did the podcast. <laughs> this is before this shit was like, I mean, podcasts were still kind of popular. Yeah, by that time, not but for gaming. That was before, yeah, that was before YouTube. I think was even sold. Oh, yep. Let me find this link to this. You guys can watch this after the show if you feel necessary. Uh, feel it necessary. I'm going to uh, look inside my thing, but yeah, weekend gaming. Uh, let me see. What what all did I play? I gotta get the doc document. Uh, yeah, I played some Destiny uh, before heading out to my fam's house. There we go. Um, we played Halo Five Guardians this weekend. We got into the early access beta. Probably a couple thousand people playing. I would imagine. Yeah. I also played uh, Super Mar mm. Mario Brothers on the Wii. I've been playing with my sister and uh, Christy. Uh, that game is surprisingly fun. Uh, I forgot how fun it was. I actually played it like you know, around the time that it came out and played it again because that's like, for whatever reason my, my sister doesn't have a lot of games. Uh, you know, she has a couple of games, so we, we bought her we bought her some games on the Wii. She doesn't she doesn't have a Wii yet, so we got her some games on the Wii. Say it all uh, the deal. Yeah, I had to say that to be real quiet about it. You know. <laughs> you know. Can't have her getting uh because she was like, Can I have some games for Christmas? She asked <laughs> she asked my mom that before we went to the store today. And you're like, no. Pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, I'm visiting family. My, I got my sister uh, here, my mom, Christy's with me. 
Um, my brother will be in tomorrow. He's flying in from Atlanta. Uh, we drove up from Carolina. I'm upset he couldn't make it for Frag Logic, so we could force him on. I know, yeah, that, that's pretty upsetting. Um, it would have been nice to have him sitting next to me, you know, t- chatting it up. Yeah. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I didn't play any mobile games, anything like that. Um, uh, but uh, you know, I, I got a couple things I want to talk about with Destiny when we get to end of the year stats and stuff. Talking about that because uh, I also, uh, if you guys uh, saw my Twitter feed this uh, weekend, or was it yesterday? Might have been yesterday. Uh, so Monday, yesterday, uh, I threw out a bunch of uh, my my stats on uh, Destiny. Did you post your stats? I did. It's pretty sizable. KD and everything. KD and everything. I maintained a 2.0 KD across 30,000 kills in six all six subclasses. Solid. Yeah. Did you post a, like a class by class breakdown? I, I didn't. Um, generally speaking, I, I posted like my average kills per uh, class, and I didn't want to break down weapons for each one because I used yeah. the hunter and and titan so uh, sparingly by comparison to my warlock, so it kind of skewed things. But yeah, I, you know, I thought it was interesting. I, to, uh, there's some, well, we'll get to it. There's there's some interesting stats you can kind of pull away from that. Um, what about you? What about you, man? I actually I played a lot of the Halo Five beta. I played probably like fifty or so games, uh, all in all. Uh, also played uh, Cloud, uh, who some of you guys know from the Gears community from way back. Uh, he got me and Sean on this game called Tales of Majael. Um, it's abbrevi- abbreviated just Tome, T-O-M-E. Uh, it is a roguelike, and it's actually one of the better ones I've played. Uh, so I've spent, let me see, I got Steam open real quick. I gotta pop out the chat. I've already got 26 hours on that. And I just 26? bought it on, like, Saturday? Like, Friday Ooh. or Saturday? So, it's a fun game. Uh, I've been grinding through that and unlocking stuff, so... You got y'all hooked on that. Recommend it. Like, if you're a big fan of, like, actual RPGs and roguelikes, then uh, take a look. Flacco, what up? Uh, besides that, I think I played a game or two of Dota. Uh, going back to Heroes this week, though, because... A, because I don't have the Halo beta anymore. Uh, right. Until the 29th. Uh, but also because they did a big beta wave invite, so a few uh, friends got in. Mitch got in. Uh, Sean got in. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if a few others are also uh, going to be on that Heroes train now. So we get some Heroes of the Storm in this week and next. Ah, disappointing news. Uh, somebody tried to hack my account on on uh, Battle.net. Fucking lame. So my account is locked. I was going to play some over <laughs> while I was on break. Look, I'm sitting here. I'm waking up at 6 o'clock. Still doing my morning streams. Although I'm playing VOD. Um, but... I uh, I can't play any game. Well, I mean, I play some Steam games, but I wanted to play Heroes of the Storm. Had this shit all planned out. You're messing with me. It's messed up, man. I don't know why people <laughs> even try to hack those Blizzard accounts, man. Like, the success rate has to be so low because of all the security stuff they have in place. Like, just don't get it. Don't go where yes. people are still trying. It's locked down right now. I didn't even set up that, uh, you know, they have that authenticator. Yeah, you didn't have so, authenticators set up. Nah, I mean they still couldn't get in because they, they needed to uh, they needed to know this was a secret password and they had to have my email. They lock you out if you're like four or five guesses too. Yeah, yeah. You have so to go customer support. I have to go through customer support because I couldn't remember my shit. I made it something real hard that I didn't even <laughs> remember from my secret question. <laughs> it's like what was this? I think it was like the girl that I kissed. Yeah, that's like the question. Yeah. You guys will never know. You'll never know. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so some other stuff I wanted to mention before uh, getting started. I've been doing these remote streams, right, in the morning. I have a couple people in here that I've seen. I think Teddy was in on yesterday. Uh, this, a couple other people in. Waffle was in, I think, today, this morning. Um, but I've been doing these remote streams, and basically while I'm out, Markin was also in. Uh, what's up, Markin? But uh, basically, I'm at I'm at my um, my mom's right. I have my laptop controlling my PC at home, and I can stream backlog gameplay that I haven't shown. Tomorrow uh, morning, I'm actually showing some Gears of War three. I got four hours of Gears of War three gameplay that I plan on showing. And this is actually pre patch <laughs> or whatever. How many backlog so hours of Gears gameplay do you have on your hard drive? Uh, I don't know. It's got to be in the hundreds. <laughs> it's probably. I could probably stream like 
probably a week straight. For those who don't know, at one point, Kale was no longer playing Gears, but still put out Gears videos for like three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without ever actually hopping on to play. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Like, I had enough video for three months. Like, each day, just put out a video. It was just nuts. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, what, I'm try- what I uh, am trying to do tomorrow. Uh, and then I think Friday or Saturday, no, Thursday, we're back to, to Destiny, I think. And then Friday might be a mix of games, including Call of Duty. So, should be fun. Should be fun. <laughs> Kupo says gears instant hundred viewers. <laughs> hey, I've gotten out a couple times on Destiny now. <laughs> uh, yeah, on the weekend. So I've been uh, I've been killing it on that Destiny content. Because <laughs> no one else is streaming at six fucking a.m. Six. <laughs> Yo, I gotta I gotta corner the market right now. It's a takeover. Oh man. Uh, so let's get into this Halo Five. Sure. Let's talk about I mean, the Halo Five. Topic. You can go ahead and get started. I've been without a 360 for how long? Uh, a year and a half. Sounds Something about right. Something like that. A year and a half without the 360, and maybe two years since I played a Gears game. All right, H5 beta early access is the topic. Yes, uh, you play quite a bit, right? I play less amount. than you. Yeah, but I we I think I I put in like seven seven hours. Um, the bad part about that seven hours is maybe two hours was spent in lobby time because yeah. uh, I mean. Again, it's a product byproduct. I think of being in uh, early access, and you know, people watching streams. I think we're getting a a bad feeling about it because of the issues with Master Chief Collection, which is unfortunate. Um, but that is a result of putting out a product uh, this early for people to play. It was a bit better on Sunday when I was playing as well. So I don't know if they were kind of working out some kinks as well. But I imagine the player base is pretty small. Uh, Did you play Sunday? Searching goes. You play Sunday night. Uh, yeah, it was Sunday night, and I played okay. with uh, with Goss, G O S S, and some of his guys. So we had party of four. Okay, um, if I'm not mistaken, they had server maintenance in the morning on Sunday because I tried to get on, and it says some uh, servers couldn't be found, Halo Five servers couldn't be found, something like that. Cool. So I mean, uh, they definitely tr- uh, tried to work on it. I think to to re- <clears throat> um, repair some of the issues that they were having. Um. I got a couple of things here. Uh, we have so some general feedback. Uh, we have uh, you know a breakdown of weapons. Um, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the maps, um, and then some new elements of the game. Um, general stuff. You know, I felt like the game was uh, different and the same at the same time, simultaneously. Uh, the speed of the game is definitely picked up. Would you agree, Colin? It feels it feels much more arena ish. Yeah, I'd say so. Although I wouldn't say like, uh, for example, like the comparison which was easy to draw was Truth versus Midship in Halo Two. Uh, since yeah. it's the, essentially the same map, but really it's like double the size of Midship, right? Uh, if you actually right. look at the actual size scale, so like playing Midship in Halo Two obviously was more fast paced and intense, just because it's condensed. Um, yeah, but the actual right. core gameplay, I'd say, was definitely faster than previous halos which i don't know if that's necessarily good or bad but uh i think it's noticeable it's definitely noticeable um i i'm gonna be really reserved on saying whether or not i think the game is gonna be good or not I'm like we got such a small little slice of the game that it's hard to be like yeah this is gonna be the this is gonna be the one that brings everybody back um i th- i think based on the changes that they've made there's still gonna be a pretty big uh, uh, I, I'd say, like, <laughs> chasm between the. <laughs> this gonna be a bit a pretty big split between uh, those hardcore die hard Halo fans, um, especially some of those preconceived like, uh, this game has sprint 
I'm not going to play it because Sprint is trash. I don't want to play. Like I saw that all fucking. There's a uh, lot of. There's a lot of people saying that too. There's a there's a whole, whole lot of that, and so it if you go into the game like thinking, okay, Sprint is trash, so this is going to be trash. More often than not, those players that are already saying that they're going to uh, uh, more than likely um, not be be very well receiving of the game going forward, right? So. I think that it's 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 almost like they're predetermining uh, how the game is going to play out, regardless of whether or not it's actually good or not, right? Um, it is, uh, uh, yeah, tricks. You know, I don't I don't necessarily know if that's confirmed or not, but I mean, you could you could say that. I've I've seen some Halo purists, like for example, we have typographic, right? That dude was a dar hard Halo. I think he played competitively Halo one, two, and probably three then switched over to Gears. He's been following us a long time. He left a comment on my uh, YouTube channel. And again, this is one of the people that is, is in your boat tricks, like Die Hard, P Halo Pierce is like, Halo 5 is actually really fun. I'm excited for the game. So I, like I said, I don't think it's any, it's, it's, it's not cut and dry, right? It's not gonna be uh, this way or that way, but I think the people that are already negative towards it are probably going to uh, uh, dislike it. Uh, that's just kind of like my gut feeling. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's going to be a, an uphill battle that they have to face. And I also think 343 is going to have some challenges with player trust a bit. So, I mean, th this beta better be so good. I feel like because of Master Chief Collection stuff, uh, issues that, um, you know, some of those people that were doubting it are like, okay, I wanna, I'm actually going to buy this. And I, I, think, I think those people would buy it anyway. But whether or not they stick around and whether or not they try to trash on the game is going to be <laughs> a pretty big impact, I think, on on this beta. Yeah, although I imagine, like, we're a year out from release. Uh, I imagine we'll see the game multiple times as well before ship. Like, I'd be surprised if they didn't do the similar treatment to, like, how MCC had, where it right. was, like, showing up at tournaments two, three months out. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if we kind of see that same kind of thing. Uh, where there's kind of other peaks to see kind of what's been changing or what's been shifting based off the beta feedback. Uh, so I don't think it'll be like end-all, be-all. Like after beta, you'll have people like, I am not purchasing or I am purchasing. Like I think it's going to be kind of a fluid thing. And I it should be because one year out is a long time to be able to make changes. And the game's already at like a pretty crazy level of polish for one year out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I say yeah, that yeah. having worked on quite a few games now. And it's probably the most polished game I've seen one year away from launch uh, in terms of the animations, effects, lighting, maps, like having seven arted out maps ready for a beta test is insane. It's, that's pretty crazy. It is like, pretty crazy. Usually like the one year or one year out slice or like a vertical slice or something is only like two or three maps. So like doing seven is pretty crazy. Which you Colin, this leads me to believe that we'll probably get fifteen twenty, very similar to Titanfall. Fifteen twenty. Bare minimum. Whoever's out there listening. Three, four, three. <laughs> That'd be nice. 15, 20, bare minimum, not made from the community maps on launch. Give me about 12 of those arena maps. Maybe maybe 16 if, if you go 20. I only want four big maps. <laughs> <laughs> those big maps are for the birds. <laughs> Destiny has done me on the big maps with, with low numbers. Unless they go like 16 versus 16, I am fucking done with big ass maps. Like, done. Done. I don't want to see it. <laughs> done. Those, those Destiny, right those Destiny I'm scars. Fucking, I'm fucking done <laughs> with big maps right now. I'm done. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, general feedback for me, I enjoyed the, the matches I got into play in. Um, I, I think Colin and I, I mean, I mean, me and you rolled that the three hours that we played, I think we lost one match and we rolled everybody else. Actually, I don't know if we actually lost a match. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think we lost the match. I don't think we lost. And if we did, it was real, real close. But we, uh, we rolled people. Next day, I played by myself. I was ranked gold one, got up to gold two. Um, I might have been right at the bubble on gold two, gold three. And because I was playing by myself, I had some mix and match. I also muted a couple people because there was like people just uh, mad annoying on the mic, which I, I figured would happen. Um, the uh, experience by myself wasn't quite as good, obviously, uh, not having another player that could hold it down. As a matter of fact, listen, I uh, played a game. I had uh, Google, Goggle. I can't. Remember. I don't remember if he was a pro or semi-pro player. He's a popular streamer, right? He was in my game, 
And so we're playing uh, uh, Empire, and this is just the, the slice of what I had to deal with. So we're playing uh, Empire. I run out towards that open side sniper. I don't remember the call off the top of my head, but open side Outside. sniper. I run out there, yeah. uh, right by my like I'm by myself in a one v one. I fight this dude outside, and uh, I kill him. But I didn't grab the sniper right away because I was in a one v one. This dude uh, dies over inside, and three of his uh, the all three of my teammates they die on the inside. He comes back out behind me because he spawns behind me, and he's like. This dude hasn't even picked up the sniper yet. God, this is going to be one of those games, right? So I'm like, this fucking dude. So I pick it up, right? I pick up the sniper. I get a couple more kills. And he's just getting fucking destroyed the entire game. Destroyed the entire game, right? Did you have your I mic finished. in to say anything? You didn't no, have I didn't in. have my mic oh. in, right? I was sitting there. I was streaming, though. So I was talking to uh, the, the chat like, this fucking dude's talking trash about me. Yeah. And he gets shit on. <laughs> shit on. During the game, right? And uh, I'm just like, he's one of those dudes that I can't stand in games where they talk mad noise because they think they're a hot shit. And then when they get into a game where they get wrecked, they're blaming everybody else. But he actually, the surprising thing is like he manned up and he was like, yeah, I'm just getting, I'm getting worked this game. I'm getting worked this game. But he was still like, he was like, I hate it when teammates uh, sit back in camp and I'm the only one pushing. I'm like, dude, you're not, like, you're a scrub. <laughs> Basically, is what I'm thinking. Like you're you're not out here pushing. You're just being a bad player and dying. <laughs> like yeah. it, I can't stand that in any game I play. Right? Like people like that. And he's the type of person that I would immediately mute on the mic because he was just being obnoxious. Right? Like, <laughs> but I actually kept it in because before the the for, before the game started, somebody asked him in, in the lobby. They were like. Because he was talking to him. He goes, yeah, I'm a streamer, right? Uh, you guys are on stream. He must have said that because I came into it, right? And um, uh, the guy on the other team was like, oh, okay, what's your Twitch channel? All right. So he tells him his Twitch channel. This dude loads up his, his, uh, his Twitch stream. I can't remember what the dude's name was. And went off, right? <laughs> and <laughs> he tore him up. Just tore up the and chat. So, the end of the game comes up. This is what this is what made it gold for me. That's why I didn't mute anybody. The end of the the game comes up, and he goes, "Oh man, it was cool seeing your reactions when I sniped you on stream." <laughs> 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 oh, oh man, listen, I lost it in there, dude. I was dying. Oh, that shit was so funny, man. Uh, and then he he like quit out immediately after. Yeah, that. of course he did. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this? Am I lagging out? I think I'm, la I'm lagging out. Sorry, I'm lagging. Oh, no. Oh. oh, we can't play again. Oh, that sucks. So, believe me, guys, sweet justice was served to, my, to our boy Goggle talking mad trash to uh, his teammates. Meanwhile, he's stinking it up. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, people on the mic was definitely interesting. Uh, the, the side effect of that of me muting folks was. That feature that I want to talk about, new additions, Colin, is the map callouts, right? Um, there's there's two things, two distinct things, right? They have the actual audio cue from the Spartans calling things out, and then they have the visual cue of where you're at spatially. So if you're actually talking, you can say, "Hey, I'm in blue two, I'm in red, uh, red one, I'm in pink, or whatever," right? So um, the fact that I can mute people and still have a general sense of where they are is actually quite refreshing considering every other game I've played up to this point doesn't do a very good job for players that either aren't on the mic or don't communicate period uh, or they don't know call outs giving me a sense of where they're actually at so if I am the top slayer in the game I can actually be listening to that audio cue and go oh okay there's some guys over there yeah I actually love both those things I was making calls based on the uh automatic ones that they had made for the maps by like the second day like i was already like yeah they're t1 t2 t3 for tower inside uh, on empire they're outside they're red base blue base red sneaky yeah. blue sneaky like i was calling them all out in the, within the first couple days which usually like i just don't care about learning that until we go over as a team and, like talking with people that you know it's usually like you only would communicate with your team and that's right. really it or if your buddy's playing then you would talk uh, so picked up all that really quick, uh, and I every now and then when I was playing by myself, I'd hear the Spartan callouts, and they're using the same lingo, you know, like they're using the same like he's red sneaky, blue sneaky, uh, one out, blue sneaky. I'd hear a Spartan announce, and super useful. And mm -hmm. even uh, 
on I think it was Saturday or Sunday, I was playing with Sean, and he's like, oh, you're the female Spartan, right? So I'll listen out for your character to call stuff out, since you're the only girl in the match, I think, on our team. So, so that was really easy, too, because it was the female Spartan making the calls each time. So That's, that's good. Pretty neat. Uh, the, the interesting thing about the, the call-outs is that there's... I think, I think players are acknowledging, and I'm going to say uh, the hardcore guys. I think the hardcore players are acknowledging that this is actually a pretty good change, but I've consistently see, seen that they've not, not necessarily hard feedback on it or, or very like uh, matter-of-fact feedback, like they definitely want this, but people asking for the ability to toggle it on or off um, so that if they're playing in competitive matches, players are actually having to use communication in order to uh, talk. You know, I personally don't, I don't even have a problem with it being a toggle option. I don't have a problem with it being in while I'm playing. Because I feel like contextually speaking, even if that was going and you had your teammates making callouts, contextually speaking, you're going to understand what that what your human player is telling you more than whatever is automated that they have going. Um, and uh, the one thing that I feel like matters to me more so than making it easy, because I feel like that's what players, hardcore guys, it's easy, right? It's easy. Players don't have to communicate. The thing that bothers me is that uh, it's it's it can be distracting. I think to the overall uh, the audio, the noise in the game, right? Like I want to hear footsteps. I want to hear my teammates. Sometimes right. I want to hear where shots are coming from. I don't necessarily want to hear you saying "nice kill" uh, or the, the extra bullshit, right? That there there's some nice kill, nice shot that the Spartans are saying. That's that's unnecessary uh, garbage. I don't need that in the game, and especially at high level play. So I would have the toggle option specifically because I don't want the extra background noise versus it being easy mode because uh, I feel like that's a weak excuse uh, um, to, to put in there a, 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 as a competitive player. Like that, eh, that doesn't do it for me. But in terms of having audio noise be, be a reason, I can agree. I can get on board with that. I can say, yeah, let me, give it, get, let me get a toggle option to, to turn off all that background noise because I don't need all that extra the fluff. I've heard some people say it just stylistically seems out of place for Spartans to be talking in that kind of like a casual manner, uh, mm -hmm. which I can kind of understand, although there's also some lore reasons against that if you want to get into a lore argument. Um, so yeah, so like I can understand the reasons against it, but that said, like it's really nice to be able to hear that kind of jargon and call-outs when you're playing solo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100% agree uh, with that. Um, so... I'm going to say we should go to, so we got, let me see, call outs. Um, what about, look, here, here's some stuff that, uh, this is my, my big huge feedback thing that I've kind of put together and also using for the show. But uh, what did you think of the, the beginning intros and the end game <laughs> celebrations uh, for the match? So to me, I think it's important to view it this way is that that's like a starting point, right? It's just showing, hey, we have this, and we kind of want to get some thoughts on it. Ultimately, it ends up being, like, and it's pretty cheesy. It's pretty cheesy, I think, is the word. Uh, we're having fun. I had it at the office, and we're all kind of laughing at the poses post-match, you know, where they're like, yeah, yeah they're like, high five. Yeah. Up? yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, it's, it's funny the first or second time, but when you see it, like, five to ten times, it gets kind of lame. Uh, but to me, like, I think what they're trying to get towards, and I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, well, Titanfall, every single time the map starts, you drop in off the ship. And, like, I think nothing of it. Like, I don't even think about it anymore. It's just, like, that's how you drop into the map. You know, it's like you're on the ship, and you drop off. Sometimes the guy says something, and, like, you're right. off into the map. And, like, that feels really natural, and I think that that's what they're trying to eventually get to. Uh, I think they should probably go that way versus the more comedic route, unless they want to just do that every now and then. <laughs> like, to me, like... Those type of poses would be really cool if you won, like, 50 to 20. And it's like, you know what, all right, we're just going to clown and have uh, the taunt celebration. But, like, if it's a close match, then I think that something that's a bit more appropriate maybe should be used. But I, th I think as a concept, it's cool. Uh, I think they just need to work on a lot of the intro outros, which, from the beta trailers and the stuff uh, for Crossfire and the gameplay for Crossfire, when they're like running remember, they run off and they shoot off these, like, man cannon things into the map. And, like, that makes a lot more sense to me and I think it'll feel a lot more natural as well because you like you get a running start into the map right versus mm -hmm. right now it's like you see the poses fade to black instantly in the game and it's like there's right. no countdown or anything so it's like kind of jarring as well so I think once they get more in that direction it'll be cool uh, but right now it's kind of cheesy 
Yeah, I, I was cracking up because uh, somebody had called out. They were like, it looks like American Gladiator. <laughs> while, we were, while we were streaming, uh, I think it was Saturday or Friday night, whenever you and I were playing, somebody was saying that those poses look like American Gladiator stuff at the end of the match. <laughs> I was dying, man. That was, that was spot on, though. Um, They're going to have one where like the blue team's standing there and the red team comes behind him with a steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... It, Look, I, I thought it was a nice addition as well. Uh, uh, I think I used the word cheesy uh, in, my, in my, my feedback is, is on this as well. And, and uh, the big comparison I have was definitely Destiny, right? Like um, their, their intros, and I forgot, I forgot all about Titanfall and the Titan drop like as, as their thing. But uh, I, in my mind, the fresh is Destiny, and they have like their, their introductions are really badass. Like, you feel like you're like this badass guardian when you get in there, but I think it's yeah. a combination of like you can see those custom weapons, like people in the pistol pose, right, or uh, dudes with the rest and the gun on their shoulders, and then you got the custom outfits and stuff. It looks really badass, I think, in Destiny, and uh, like you said, it's a good starting point. Uh, but I don't know if they're gonna air on, like you said, the 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 badass, or they're gonna go cheese, super cheesy. Um, high fives and Ninja Turtles. <laughs> like I said, I think that stuff's really funny if you like completely <laughs> stomp the other team and then be able to style a bit at the end. Or maybe have it be a contextual like button press where you can kind of pick what you do. But I don't know. It, it, it wasn't suited. Like, really intense match. We win by two points, 40 to 58. And then at the end you get like, what's up? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, it's certainly right. hilarious. <laughs> um, so... There's a couple things. I want to talk about maps, like right now. Uh, what you thought about Truth and Empire? Um, I think you and you had said uh, while we were playing, or maybe it was someone in the chat. I can't remember, but you felt like Empire was more of a Halo Five map. Like it felt better. Um, I think so. Then, and and I would. I think after playing Truth, like I don't know how many times I played it, and then playing Empire, I feel like look, both maps are good. I feel like, uh, like you said, Empire. Uh, kind of fits more into Halo 5 and I think it's a combination of things right when I was trying to move around from platform to platform in truth everything felt so spatially like uh, like like here's a good example you could make the jump from uh, one base to mid bridge you can make that jump sometimes but I only landed it like one time and I couldn't even remember how I did it once or twice and I had to clamber up to the top right like a lot of the jumps and truth don't feel as good as the jumps on Empire. So, you know, you can like clamber from ledge, ledge to ledge. There's some spots on like, uh, it's very subtle stuff too. So like, for example, on Empire, you can jump from mid up top over the, uh, there's like this little s slit area we can fall into that goes into like either base, red or blue base. And like, if you happen to jump up, and I, I tried this one time, right? And I think I, I died. Because uh, it was just, I was trying to use the the, uh, the impact, uh, the ground pound basically. So there's a dude running in from, I saw him run from the sniper inside of uh, uh, the outside sniper into red base. And I tried to time it so I could jump from mid into red base from the top. He had no idea where I was, but he saw me on radar, which was another thing we got to talk about as well with the map flow. Um, and then I tried to pound down on him. And he had, like I said, he had no idea where, where I was, but he ended up moving again right when I was about to uh, hit him. And I just like, I, instead of killing him, I like brushed him and did some damage and he like flew away from me. So um, that type of stuff, um, I feel like really fits like what they're trying to do with the movement, using a lot of the uh, the, the uh, in-game uh, options like the, the clamber. Uh, features, I should say, the clamber. Yeah, and uh, like dashing through a doorway into a dashing room. Dashing through a doorway, you know, like right. that kind of stuff, which doesn't uh -huh. really play out at all on uh, Truth at all. Right. And like when I was playing Truth, like a lot of times we got into these situations where it was just like one team was on one side, the other team was on the other, and there wasn't really a great angle of approach because you could like throw nades to try and weed them out and everything, but there's enough room and with dashes and like just the map being spread out a bit, like you could dodge the nades pretty easily and just kind of keep going about your way. I felt like it was really hard to break those kind of setups. And no one was really accomplishing anything because, like, the sword wasn't super valuable in those situations because everyone's posted up, you know, watching the various entryways. So, right. in that respect, I feel like it played a lot better out on uh, Empire. Or, yeah, Empire uh, than Truth did. Uh, 
the the thing about truth is, and this is where I'm going to get into that radar talk. Um, playing with radar on on truth made it easier, I think, to get setups going because yeah. you knew where people were going to be, um, and that made it re- really difficult to push. Especially with the multi-level stuff, like being on like P2 or P3 and knowing someone's underneath you, it's like super easy to just sit there and look yeah. down. Yeah. Um, so like um, that's definitely a major factor is the radar playing against the movement and the aggressive options that are given to you. Uh, they kind of become null when you can see it on radar that someone's coming beneath you. So I think once radar is off, those I, I think I personally think once radar is off, the whole map flow is going to change quite a bit. I feel like you're going to be able to move around the map a lot better. But uh, um, I, as of right now, like uh, I, I didn't like Truth as much as Empire, but both felt good. I mean, they're reasonably sized. Um, I had some people on YouTube commenting saying that they they look like Truth was really big. Um, and, and it is it is fairly uh, big. A, big, a, a big map, but 4v4 didn't play out too bad. It's just that radar, man. Like that cuts down on speed and your ability to move around quite a bit uh, on a map that size. And, and like we said, it's it's, it's kind of difficult to uh, break a setup if people know where you are all the time. Yep, I agree. Um, did you? Would you think of the? Uh, and this is part. I'm going to give this a map feedback, but it's also kind of weapons. Would you think about the? Uh, the timer on the weapons coming in to play. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I mean, I was a fan of Ordnance and Halo 4, and like that's kind of what it harkens back to for me. Right. Uh, like the idea of, I get what they're trying to do, and that's like make a big fanfare around the battle around the weapons. Because when two teams know the maps and they know those timings, that's when the game is at its best, in my opinion. Because everyone's jostling for position before the before the weapon comes up. And then they're kind of maintaining that position to grab the power weapon. And, like, that's that's the core of the game, right? That's where your score swings happen, uh, both during the fight and in the resulting uh, power weapon sprees or whatever. Uh, so I get that they're trying to push everyone there, like, for the people that don't know those timings, uh, which is a lot of people, uh, mm-hmm. admittedly. And, like, calling out these specific locations is good. Uh, that said, it's kind of like... Uh, it's weird having nav markers in TDM. You know what I mean? Like, it's basically, like, it was kind of hearkening me to come to this area, uh, and almost by force, I felt like. Like, otherwise, there was going to be no action around the map. And, like, the sub-objectives of, like, controlling this area, controlling these nades, I feel like gets de-emphasized as a result. Uh, just right. mentally, because you have nav markers on the map. Uh, and also just knowing when the icon went away that someone had grabbed it was another big one. Uh, since you know that they grabbed the sniper rifle and you don't need to push or move over there anymore. Uh... It's a minor thing, uh, but it is like it, I feel like it cheapens some of the depth of knowing the timers and being on top of that stuff and paying attention. Uh, so look, I I feel like there's a lot of games doing this now. Um, uh, it's, you, it's, not, it's not as or, bad as Destiny, which gives everyone not, a power weapon that's the chest. <laughs> it, it is definitely not as bad as Destiny, but it is worth noting that Destiny does a very similar thing. However. Uh, Destiny doesn't tell you the time, like they're not actually putting a ticker on when it's going to come up, like it's 30 seconds or whatever. There's one call out from the, the announcer, and then you have to know the locations, right? They pop up on the map, but you have to know where they're at. You have to get to them. Uh, the, the bad part about theirs is, like Colin said, when you pick up the ammo box, it gives heavy or your, your power weapon to everyone, right, around you. Um, and, and I think it's a 15 minute, uh, meteor meter. It's really big. Yeah. meter radius um, so uh, it's, it's hard to com- make a direct one to one comparison there but definitely the call out and acknowledgement that it's there is it prompts people to say okay I'm either going to pay attention to this and get towards it or I'm not and there's nothing that's really like uh, let me let me show a timer here to to, to show when I'm going I, I feel like that's that, that's leaning a little that's that's not having faith in your player base uh, a, a little bit right um, you still get people that don't run over there, and you get kind of annoyed. Like, dude, they made the heavy weapon call. Why aren't you over here? Why aren't you? <laughs> or they just run right by it. And I feel like that's going to happen regardless of if there's you know notification in there or not. But more often than not, I had three teammates all elbowing to grab it, and then on the other end of the map was the other team all elbowing to grab their sniper. So it was just like <laughs> there was no combat. It was just both teams kind of found their sniper and then fought over their teammates with it, or fought with their teammates to pick it up, which is kind of weird. Right. Which, I mean, it happened a bit before in Halo, but not as much as I saw during the beta. Like, the only map I can remember that happened a lot was, like, the pit. Uh, picking up the sniper at the bottom of the tower. One thing I do, I will say that, uh, I don't necessarily know if I like this or dislike it. 
So, Destiny, if you kill someone with a power weapon, you're the only one that can grab their power weapon. On Halo, if you kill someone, right, they drop their, their whole arsenal. I found myself kind of getting irritated when I killed a sniper and one of my teammates ran over and picked it up as I was about to pick it up. Like, I was found myself getting slightly irritated. Like, dude, I just worked to get that kill. Like, you weren't even near me. You just spawned <laughs> behind me. You ran over and grabbed that. Why, why would you do that? Uh, that happened to me a couple of times, and I was like, man. That doesn't feel good to have that taken away from me. <laughs> so uh, that's a that's a weird thing that it's feeling been that happens way normally. Been that way I know it's a weird feeling to be salty about getting that because I normally I wouldn't care. Like I, I've been so trained to not care if someone else picks it up. See, Destiny's made you soft. It's made me a little soft. Made you a little soft. Uh, getting your weapon taken from you. I've, I've been a little upset about that. Uh, like the, the few times it happened in, in Halo Five, but. Um, I I have really mixed feelings about uh, about it, man. We've been so trained on knowing uh, timers, and that's that's one of those mental cues that separates great players from good players, right? Like knowing and setting up and being able to take it right, but knowing that with the timing, um, having the the ability to get over there, get to your positions to set it up, um, and and get the power weapon. Is the other portion of that, but I, I guess I just for something more subtle they're gonna do it. Like for example, they yeah. have the Spartan. Like if they, if a player is in the area, then like their Spartan will call out, "Hey, sniper spawning soon," or something like that. Like that would be a cool subtle way of doing it as kind of a uh, teaching mechanism, uh, or even just like at the beginning of the game showing the times. Like I think people would gravitate to that pretty well. Right. I don't know. But it does kind of hit you over the head right now with the current presentation. I, I, I'd agree. Um, now, that being said, we're talking about Empire with the two snipers. Yeah, um, and on truth, no one grabbed the sword. Like truth, it got to no a point where it got to the point where like no one was contesting it, and I it was really hard to use to be honest. Like most of the kills I got were in people's backs because they weren't paying attention. But like if I was against a good group and everyone was watching radar, no shot. Yeah, I, I look. I uh, I thought that uh, what's up, tense. I thought that uh, part of the issue with truth and people setting up was like there was not a there was no incentive to grab that sword <laughs> whatsoever, and, and it could be a byproduct of like I said, radar being on. Like you knew you weren't gonna get a lot of sword kids because people know that when you're running at them, right? Um, and you have to clamber up there. Ugh. The flip side, yeah, there's no good way <laughs> to get to it. You have to run across a wide open area. Uh, I, Maybe if that was like a rocket launcher, people would fight for it more, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, but right now, the sword wasn't wasn't doing it for me. Um, what do you think about two snipers on Empire? I feel like that was overkill. Um, overkill. It was okay. I, mean, I didn't really have a lot of sniper versus sniper fights. It was just kind of like the angles were there, but like they're all kind of like chopped up with lots of vertical uh, obstructions. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit, but not much. I, uh, I, I just feel like there was always like two or three snipers in play the entire match, uh, the way the game was Which is a little out. too much, yeah. I, I felt like the size of the map didn't warrant two snipers. Uh, I, but look, I had this happen to me, and I feel like the idea of, of having two snipers is so one team, if one team gets one, you have an opportunity to get another. But I played a match with uh, Ghost, Neighbor, Dursky, and somebody else. And I was the only. I got five kills uh, out of seven, right? We got our to our team total was seven kills. I got five of them. Let me tell you that uh, we didn't have an opportunity to grab the sniper, uh, either of them. At from start start of the game to middle of the game to the end of the game, nobody on my team had the sniper. And having two three people with the sniper running around, that was not fun. Uh, Why are the three so. for three guys trying to scare people <laughs> off the game? Uh, I, look, I thought it was hilarious, but I know those other dudes. I had one dude quit on my team. Um, I know those other dudes. I noticed a lot time. of quitting, by the way. I noticed a lot of quitting. Yes, I had like six games in a row with people quitting. Yeah, that's that's gonna suck, dude. It's gonna suck. Like you're getting your shit pushed in, and uh, you know people are gonna quit. So I mean. I don't see what the point of quitting is. It's probably it docks points on your uh, on your uh, arena rank, right? Like I'm pretty sure. Why would you like? You might as well just finish out the match because you're going to probably get worse uh, penalty for quitting. 
whatever. Um, and I had a few people quit, man, especially when they couldn't get kills. I was, which was funny. Uh, there's a skill gap, though. There is. Definitely, definitely felt there was a skill gap. There is. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's, I'm run through weapons real quick. Um, I have BMR or BR DMR. Um, what, did you have a personal preference? I prefer the BR. So did I. It's kind of weird how it sounds and stuff, but I prefer the BR. Yeah, the audio for the BR is uh, 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 not thought, very good. I thought it was a DMR the first time I picked it up. It is just based the, off the audio because the three shots are like. <laughs> right. Uh, it. It's uh. It's not iconic. I just. I think that's what I was saying when we were streaming. Like it does not sound iconic. It sounds. We were flat, and you, it's, you can't really tell. Like you said, it sounds like a DMR. Uh, DMR sounds pretty good. You know what I have a problem with? Is the DMR's animation? Uh, it can't be finished. That can't be That can't be the final animation on none that of, DMR. None of it's final, man. Okay. Because, I mean, it just looked like it was, like, curved weird, and it was shooting. I don't know. The muzzle of the, the, the weapon looked really funny to me <laughs> when it was firing and it was like throwing me off that was part of the reason i didn't want to pick it up because if you fired it real fast the muzzle of it like curved upward and looked weird but the br um was definitely my go-to after playing i don't know was it like by hour four or five because i was trying to grab them equally but after four or five i was like where's the br at let me just grab a br i just want the br i was just scrambling for the closest one they were always gone like, all the BRs and DMRs were gone all the time. Especially on uh, Truth, because you grab the one at the bottom of the lift, and then you lift up, and it lands you on the other one, so you grab both BRs from your base as a result. I, was I didn't pretty, like I was the BR annoying. placement. I didn't like the BR placement on Truth at all. I actually liked where the DMR placement was. but oh, the that, window. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, because nobody would jump up there. So you could get a DMR, and I felt like I was using DMR on, tr on Truth, and BR on uh, on Empire, uh, and and I still don't think I figured out all of the spawns for uh, the BR, oh, I but, but I felt like I found a couple. Got all of those unlock. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but they were always gone, like no matter what. So need those BR starts. Yeah. Uh. So there was there was a a lot of uh, discussion around aiming down sights and increasing accuracy. I think Typo posted that the SMG increased accuracy uh, when you aim down sights. And then I felt like uh, the very last game you and I played, I aimed down my sights with somebody with the assault rifle. They were across the map, and I killed them super fast. And I felt like the accuracy when aiming down sights has increased. It is. There's video. It's like almost double this tight. Hmm. So my feelings were correct. I didn't even test it at all. My feelings were correct. Now, yeah, I don't know. The end result is I end up sitting there spamming the aim down sights when I'm using those weapons, like during a fight, just so I can get like the slightest little bit of a ADS boost, uh, even while I'm under fire. So like that's how I ended up using it ultimately, which is kind of awkward, uh, I would say. Because uh, you're getting knocked out of sights, but you like need to keep going into sights as much as possible. Because even though it's not right. a damage boost, like accuracy is effectively a damage boost, right? Uh, on an automatic weapon, like every bullet that misses that you would have hit if you were aimed on sights is damage that's left on the table. So like to me, like you have to keep clicking it the entire time, uh, which is a bit weird as a control mechanism. Uh, I think the difference between the two was pretty stark too. Yeah, with those weapons, uh, I didn't really feel it as much on the BR or the DMR, uh, but on the automatic stuff, I definitely noticed it. Look, I I I'm not a Halo diehard, right? Loki tried to take out Arctic, <laughs> Mister <Mr>. One, <laughs> calling calling you out uh, <laughs> for throwing those nades at me when we were on Empire. I this stuck dude, you. I stuck you. He, he legit threw a sticky grenade. There's no, on there's me. no team damage. Though. He tried to kill me. Literally, I was on the stroke. So, <laughs> it was my first time ever using a scuff. So, like, I was had that going, and I was using a, like a weird controller config because some of the Halo 
controls got swapped around versus like where they would normally be. It's so, like the combination of all those things. I was just like this <laughs> and hitting buttons, and then every now and then something would come out, and I just I threw two or three grenades at Kale in one game. But there was no team damage, so we were good. We were good. Right. Until there is team damage, and you do it again. <laughs> it would have happened again. <laughs> uh, so look, I, I don't. I don't have a strong opinion about aiming down sights, increasing the accuracy, but I know there are strong opinions about ADS, increased accuracy from some of those hardcore folks. So, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to remain pretty neutral on it, but uh, I, I was going on the assumption that there was no difference because I thought that's what was said. I swear that was said at some point. I feel like yeah, I feel like that is what I thought that was part of like I thought that was a very pointed point of their initial marketing for the game. Right. Um so uh, look. Uh nothing I'm, there's nothing really I can say other than it's going to be a tough uh uh sell for some of the people that had other expecta- <laughs> expectations I mean, there. That said, despite the bonus to accuracy for like zooming in with the assault rifle and SMG they were still inferior weapons to the BR and the DMR. Uh, I, like I, every now and then you catch someone, every now and then you catch someone and get a kill. Okay, but if you, you just I'll... use the AR, you just use the SMG. I guarantee you have a lower KD than someone who uses the BR or the DMR almost exclusively. I actually feel like the SMG. If you play, if you played like radar, super campy and you just like out radar, and you were able to push people with the SMG, I think you could get on get some nice kills going. The AR, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, although, look, I feel like they they are probably more viable than they've ever been. Yep. I felt like you could legitimately use it, like without having an issue. Halo One AR wasn't bad. It just wasn't as good as the pistol. <laughs> right. That was which, the last. That was the this, last time I could think of that. Like the automatic weapons even tried to compete. Which gets me on the topic of the pistols. I, 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 thought I had trouble, was, man. It was good, dude. It was fun. It was fun, but I had trouble with it. There was a couple where I lit. I like, there were times if I was I better with it, I could have been rock wrecking. Like, it seemed really good. It was fun to yeah. use too. I feel like if I like you, said, if I had more time and I just use pistol, if I use pistol exclusively for maybe a good solid three four hours, I would probably be wrecking shot. But there were times, dude, when I had someone like directly lined up and I was like running in a straight line at someone and I saw them, they were running at me and I just went boop, boop, boop and they were dead and I was like, ooh, <laughs> that pistol is nice. Uh, other times I would be like missing every now and again and I'd, I'd empty a clip and not, someone died. It'd be no shield, no death. Um, and then I might end up dying to someone else that shot me or whatever. Uh, but Speaking of which, the aim assist, the lack of aim assist, like the tuned down aim assist felt nice. I thought I had to earn my kills. That said, some people were awful as a result. So there is that. But it felt better. Still saw some bawful players, though, because of the aim assist. It's about damn time. <laughs> it's about damn time. Bungie has really ruined the Halo community with the goddamn auto aim. <laughs> that shit has been out of this world out of this world they just had look Bungie had absolutely no faith <laughs> in the community to be able to aim with the controller that's how bad the auto aim was so seeing a low aim assist That clap going, man. I feel like if I got a four shot on someone, I had a good chance of winning the fight. You know what I mean? Because the other guy was going to have to fight for that four shot. It wasn't just who got the first shot off. Like, I could be behind in a fight and come back just because I hit every single shot, which was nice. Like, in Halo 2, it didn't happen. <laughs> and maybe months from now, or, well, months after release of the game, then it won't happen. You know, you won't be able to come back because everyone will kind of meet that bar anyways, at least at a certain level. Uh, but, yeah, for now... Comebacks all day. Turn uh, on people. Was it Relu said Destiny aim assist is out of control? Bungie, look, Destiny. Bungie has no respect for you it's as Destiny, a player yeah. on on uh, consoles. They want you to be able to aim like a crazy man. Uh, that being said, with the low aim assist, I maintained about fifty five percent accuracy across uh, BR uh, DMR or whatever your career uh, uh, stats. 
So I would like to see, and I saw, I was checking out some other players. So people were at like 40%. Um, they were at like, I saw some high 30s. Uh, so look, it's been a long time coming, y'all. I One of the things that has always turned me out about, turned me off about Halo has been the aim assist and uh, uh, just, just, just coddling you as a player from the start to finish in multiplayer has been atrocious to me. And it's one of the things that has never gotten me into competitive Halo because I just had absolutely, this is just coming from somebody that played a whole swath of games. I had no respect for the aim assist. Like it did not make me respect you as a, a player. If you're like, yep, I'm a pro Halo player. I'm sorry, but like you got a lot of shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Those dudes are highly skilled at a lot of games. But dude, you're sitting there playing a game where it's like aiming for you, like dragging your shit across screen. Like, <laughs> what? That's not fun to me, and I've never liked that. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just the god honest truth. Like, I've never liked Halo's uh, auto aim. It's been awful, fucking awful, awful. So, hats off to 343 for turning that shit down. Awful. Sorry, hold on. What do we have to do? Uh, oh, no, it's too late. I was new hats off. Hats already been off, though, for a while. It's been off for here, a here. while. Here, here. Hats on. Hats off. Oh, shit. Oh. Hold on. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And hats off. There we go. Oh, there you go. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. <sighs> what, what's that? What head is that? Uh, they call it Miss Marple. Dude, this shit's ridiculous, man. I got, I got a Napoleon hat. <laughs> Could throw on a sombrero. I'm not playing. Sue me. I'm not playing Destiny uh, in a competitive environment. I'm playing Destiny, just running around, having fun, blinking on people. There's a very big difference in what I'm, I, what I'm specifically talking to from a competitive standpoint about aim assist in the game. Halo was played at the highest level of competition with auto aim assist out of this world. Destiny is a PVE Diablo wannabe with multiplayer tacked on and has aim assist. There has a very big difference. Think about it like that. Act like you wouldn't compete in Destiny and not be all talking about it. If you had the option. I don't want to compete in Destiny though. Do you have to? Look. I, no, I wouldn't. Why would I have to? The time you don't even you've already... look, you, you don't even like the game. And you, I have no well, team. You, you you be your own team. I have no team. You pick up uh, I... pick up some of those uh, world first uh, vault players uh, players. Why would I even do that? That seems <laughs> awful to me. Destiny as a competitive game seems like one of the worst ideas ever. It's bad. Uh... <laughs> Let me see if we're missing any weapons. I think that was it. SMG, pistol, AR, BR, DMR. DMR shot well. Didn't use it as quite much as the BR. Uh, I felt like... Uh, look, I asked a lot of people on Twitter. Well, not a lot of people. I, I tweeted out on uh, Sunday if people preferred BR, DMR. It seemed like people were leaning towards BR right now. I got a couple DM DMRs in there. But... Uh, I gotta play some more maps. Gotta play some more maps. I think they'll have more weapons on the other maps as well. Uh, I'm hoping. I want to play with the shotgun. In the trailer, they I'll... showed uh, light rifle as well, which is kind of surprising. Oh. Do you, you know uh, what you think about the grenades? Because uh, let's start. That's part of the weapons. I didn't actually write that one down. I thought the blast radius on them was really big. Really weak? You uh, thought it was? No, I thought the blast radius was huge. Did you think that it was weak though? I mean, I was consistently getting no shielded by him and killed by him when I was slow shields. Uh, I, I just feel like you could dash away a lot of the time. Like a lot that's of time, you could dash that's away. What it is? But like, if I was in a room and like they, someone just naded me, I had no chance of living. I look. I can't. And that's the frag. The plasma. I never got killed by. I don't think I got killed by plasma once the entire uh, fifty plus matches I played. And I got I, like one stick. Never saw anyone else get a stick. I didn't Sorry, I got two sticks. Plasma. One was on I did a buy the frag grenades. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Apparently you can launch uh, no, weapons but, with the plasmas, though, which I didn't know. You can throw weapons pretty well, too. Like when you uh, toggle them, they get thrown pretty far. Yeah, I'm saying like you can throw a plasma at like a sniper. On yeah, the, yeah, post, yeah. You know, the physics will make it yeah. bop, uh, pop Just off. the plasma. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I don't. I'm surprised you thought the frags were weak. Cause I thought they were like I, little mini nukes. I didn't feel like, and maybe it's because I was I was dashing on them. I just didn't feel like I was hit by them unless there was a bunch thrown at me. I felt like I saw it, I dashed back. I saw it, I dashed left, I dashed right. Um, and I didn't get a whole lot of kills with frags. I got a couple. There's a couple times, man, where it felt like somebody was right on a grenade and I know I got a couple shots in them and I, I actually turned and walked away and thought I was going to get a grenade kill and it didn't kill him. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I just need to play with it some more. I didn't Like I said, I wasn't getting a ton of grenade kills, but... Um, it, it's just something that was like I look. We have different opinions on it, right there. I thought it was kind of weak. Goss is right. I also stuck myself. You stuck yourself? How Off. did you do that? I tried to throw it up uh, on Empire from like the bottom floor up into the top tower. It bounced off like four different railings and landed on my face. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was on the struggle with the grenades and the You're button like, and the button pressing hold like, on are you I, yeah, I was gonna say are you gonna blame it back on the scuff <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was the scuff <laughs> I was struggling man I was struggling with controls just randomly throwing grenades all the time speaking of controls what what did you end up uh, setting yours to uh, I went with bumper jumper and then uh, I was using the scuff uh, like the back paddle to sprint and then the other one to thrust I felt like, like uh, I didn't really have, I think default is probably the best one if like you aren't using a scuff um, bumper jumper is pretty awful with default, I think. So look, chat. What do you what for those of you guys that got an early access? I know it might not be a whole lot of people uh, that played the beta this past weekend. What controls were you using? I actually tried out bumper jumper, and I look. I tried playing with it, and I was like, something feels off. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the melee or the scoping or the thrust having to try to thrust with it, but bumper jumper felt off. I felt like I wanted to use both jumpers or bumpers to do things like uh, dash and, and thrust. And that wasn't how it was set up. And then the other thing was uh, melee and scoping was really throwing me off. Um, I needed to play. I actually went to fish sticks. I needed to play like Call of Duty in order to, for it to feel natural. The biggest issue I had was, that, like I said, I felt like I had to constantly be trying to scope in order to get the ADS advantage. Which with bumper jumper means I'm clicking the right stick over and over and over while I'm shooting at someone, uh, which is not ideal. And I wanted to melee with that, which is what I think it was. I wanted to melee with that right stick. So, look, I, I feel like this would be the first uh, Halo game where I don't play Bumper Jumper, which is really strange to me because I played Bumper Jumper in Titanfall, Destiny, previous Halos. Uh, but in this one, it I did just, I don't know, I was thrown off by it, can't get into it. I just always felt like there was something, like, all the things that could be on the face buttons, I wanted to be able to hit instantly. I wanted to be able to melee instantly. I wanted to be able to thrust instantly. I even wanted to be able to crouch instantly now so I could try and occasionally get a ground pound kill or escape with a ground pound, right? It's like all those things I need to be able to hit right away with fast controls, but I can't possibly have that. You know what I mean? And also right. be able to throw nades, also be able to scope, also be able to shoot, obviously. Uh, jump, thrust, like, there's just so much stuff that needs to be pushed right away uh, where, like, I don't feel comfortable going off and hitting the pad. Huh. In the end, I think I settled on Crouch being the one. Or no, Crouch is on left stick. So I think I got everything with the extra two buttons on my scuff. So we got uh, Mr. Monkman, default, not good. I don't know. He didn't say what he used. He used, he used default. Sumi used uh, Bumper Jumper. She said Bumper Jumper Master Race. Kupo used Recon. Flacco used Boxer. Uh, it's Bay asked you how the scuff was. We can talk about that at the end of the show. Imagine answer that question. It's hard for me to even judge so far. I like right. It well, uh, we got some more people in here. Gossy said bumper jumper. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Uh, that's that's about it. Yeah. For so you know, as we're going through, I, I definitely want to hear more people because we got what fifty people watching right now. So, uh, if you played and you got in, let let us know what you thought. Scuff on default. It's from Snake. Um, let's get into new additions, Colin. Which is mostly movement stuff, right? It is. Um, so, uh, this is my feedback about the dash. Um, it, it's, I think it's faster than the thrust on Halo 4 and, or did Halo Reach have thrust? Uh, it had a fade, right? 
Oh, fucking evade. Okay. <laughs> uh, evade was the shit. I really enjoyed the game. <laughs> <laughs> fucking evade. I enjoyed because the funniest thing was you could evade and then jump as you come out of it, and you still have all the momentum and go flying. <laughs> so you had like the routes on, uh, on like Zealot, Stupid. for example, running along the slope walls where you just like. That's <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Forgot all about that. So, uh, uh, I, I like Dash. I feel like I feel like what is going to be a common complaint with Dash uh, is that if you play something like Call of Duty, I feel like one Dash isn't enough. I, I, I want to do two dashes minimum. Uh, <laughs> and I don't want them to get crazy. Uh, but I, I just feel like the one dash just doesn't do it for me. And you can, like, don't get me wrong, you could be in the middle of a strafe. And I had this happen to me. You could be in the middle of a strafe. And, and because the auto aim isn't as bad, someone dashes you, like, it, it really throws you off. Especially if you have that timing down. It's like, do, do, do. Like, people know the timing, right, for yeah. their strafe and shooting. So you just have that timing down, and then someone dashes you. It like completely throws you off. Like it is jarring to try to be like whoop. So I definitely know there's going to be some very high level single dashes going in there. But I feel like I I want to dash twice. I still I usually feel like I was twice. using it when I was behind, and like that was the only time where I felt safe using it, the dash. You know, like it's, there's nothing to lose. Uh, but like using it in like a normal fight, just as part of the combat flow, was a bit less feasible. Um, but yeah, like I want to use it to be real aggressive and chase down people and push into rooms and like just kind of throw myself out there and kind of do uh-huh. the uh, like in their face kind of approach. And every single time, I feel like I got punished just because there's no way out, right? Like there's regen for the dash. Even if I got the kill, I'm still standing there for someone else to clean up because I can't dash out uh, right. after- afterwards. So like that's I felt the same way. Even if it wasn't two dashes, like maybe just a little bit faster would have been good uh, on the recharge. Like, it seemed like it was always like one or two seconds off of when I wanted it. <laughs> People, will, yeah, that's a, that's the a thing, Monk Man. And uh, I was actually talking about, I don't remember if I was talking to, to Colin, you about this, or if I was just saying it on stream. If they took out Sprint and added two dashes, I would be okay with that. Um,. But I don't know if two dashes and sprint is something that would go well with the community. But I definitely feel like one dash is not enough. Uh, maybe it's enough with sprint, but uh, it, it's certainly, uh, like I said, it's it's kind of off-putting to have just one. And it might be just because I have uh, a Call of Duty on my mind when I'm sitting there trying to dash. Uh, but I, I feel like it would be better for evasion, and you see a lot higher level of play. Uh, not that you won't see that already. It is crazy kind of looking at Halo's movement, um, given the fact... Well, no, I mean, just... Uh, like, the fact that there's a large emphasis on movement and kind of increasing the amount of options that you have when moving during a fight. Uh, but because we kind of got spoiled by all these other games over the past year and a half that also feature crazy movement, like, right. there's like this big bar where... I want this kind of stuff. I want Titanfall type fluid of fluidity of movement and be able to like real quickly shift directions and uh, kind of bounce off things and aggressively move. Um, even like a, obviously COD has multiple dashes, lots of side to side movement, um, and even like Destiny has a few different movement options, which are uh, I'd say like up there. But like between all of that, kind of introducing the bar for movement, I think Halo has a struggle where it's like. The core player base wants it to be old Halo. Like, they want no sprint. They want to just be walking and jumping. Like, that's it. So, like, how do they compete with the movement stuff up here while still trying to appease this, you know? Like, right. I feel like that's the current struggle that the game's kind of trying to straddle. Uh, and to that point, I think that's where, like, the dash stuff comes in. That's where the sprint stuff comes in. Um, that's where stuff like shields not recharging when you're sprinting comes in, uh, which created some pretty weird scenarios for me as well. Um, it's a timing thing, dude. Like, you could go so long. <laughs> even naturally, without even thinking about it, right? You go, like, look, like, this is this is what happened, and we're going to talk about Sprint, because we could just transition this into Sprint. Colin, I, w- I would run around, 
and be, like first I would stop, right? Like, okay, I just won this battle. Let me stop. There's some people around me. Uh, one one thousand. Two. Oh shit! I gotta run. You you're running for like you know four seconds, right? You get to another spot. And then you get hit by somebody else and you're like, wait, I don't have my shields? Boom, you're dead. I'm like, oh my goodness. That was like five seconds to six seconds of me not getting hit. Yeah. And I don't have my shields back? Oh, man. Uh, it is. There were times it, where it, I didn't realize my shields were out and I ran around with no shields for a good 16 seconds. <laughs> like, I did two laps around truth. And then all of a sudden I know, oh shit, my shields aren't act. <laughs> so I just stopped real quick. Because I was focusing on moving and jumping around the map and like getting these routes down and trying to find some jumps and stuff. And I was just like doing laps, no one to find. It was like, oh wait, let me just stop for a second. So I mean it's like all this stuff seems like it's like all these limitations trying to prevent the movement from getting too crazy. And as a result, like the movement doesn't feel as good to me as it does in COD. Uh, by good I mean like being able to set yourself apart just by moving well. Like, I don't feel like that's as important in Halo. Like, to me, like, the most... When I was most effective was when I posted up somewhere and just kind of, like, laid down fire and watched the spawns and traditional Halo tactics, you know? Like, right. I'm just going to post up. The only time the movement stuff came in was when I was trying to run away. Like, that's the only time that that kind of stuff contributed, really. Because I couldn't use it aggressively very well because it's all the different delays and penalties and... Uh, Sprint, shield not coming back, evade delay, um, radar was a huge one for not being able to use it aggressively. Uh, yeah. So like all this stuff was happening that was keeping me from being super aggressive with it, and as a result, like to me, it barely got used, despite the maps being larger. Every now and then, like a few times, it kind of shined for me. Like uh, again, I was running away on Empire, and I turned a corner, and you know how in uh, the bases there's a little jump up that goes up onto the, like the little balcony thing. And yep. then you could jump from there up into the, like, super narrow, thin window thing. So mm -hmm. I turned the corner, immediately dashed, did a 180, and then clambered up. So it was like, to him, he just sees me turn the corner, but I had already actually gone around and was coming behind him already. So, like, <laughs> that was cool. Like, when that works like that, it's super cool. Because all of a sudden, like, that person has no idea where I am, except he did because of radar. So he turned around and shot me and finished me up. But, like, <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, this is actually a pretty slick play to be able to do. You can turn and like on a dime do a hairpin turn which is pretty neat uh it's not something that halo's ever had it's nothing that either of those other games uh, destiny doesn't have that uh cod doesn't really have that um and titanfall you can't kind of do 180s like that either so like to me like that's a very defining thing for the movement but it never really comes together i don't feel like uh, despite all the pieces being there which i think there's potential for them to get there over the course of the next year uh, and kind of start to piece all that together but they still have that challenge of this is what the people want. This is what the uh, super diehard people want. And it's not meeting with that movement vision, I don't feel like. I feel like that that's probably going to be one of their biggest struggles. And Sumi mentioned the, the slide, uh, very similar to Destiny Slide. I just didn't use it a whole lot. Like, there weren't a lot of scenarios where I was using the slide. And she said there's a boost sprint slide cancel thrust to thrust technique. So, boost sprint slide. Slide. Okay, I'm picturing it. It's, a, it's a pretty interesting. I would have to try that. You pulled it off 18 times in total. She's counting. You can You had a little bean counter over on the side. Just <laughs> he got disrespected. <laughs> slide that. I just picture just get the kill and just <laughs> immediately just <laughs> paw it to the side. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, like, I wanted to use the slide more. The slide felt really cool, but I didn't really see advantage, like, time to take advantage of it, you know? Like, there was nothing to slide under, or there was, like, little advantage to sliding around a corner because someone's already expecting you anyways. Right. Um, so, like, I wanted that kind of stuff to matter a bit. Stabilizers were a point where I was able to actually influence things with the movement, uh, where if you were in the air and you click zoom, it stops you. It doesn't quite stop you. I wish it stopped you completely. But it, like, stops your movement, and then, so instead of, you'd be like, dash, and then kind of taper off, and you're, like, floating in the air as you're shooting the person, uh, which was pretty cool as far as, like, throwing people's shots off, I think. Uh, I think a few times I was able to win fights just by hitting stabilizer at the right time. But because it's ADS space, if you get shot, you get knocked out of ADS, and you fall from the sky. So, like, right. if the person hits one bullet on you, then the whole point is kind of lost. I... I was wishing that uh, 
that that stable lives or gliding whatever was uh, a little bit longer and uh, activated differently. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting it a lot of time either, especially if I was like uh, scoped with the sniper and then I jumped. Like I didn't expect to like hang in the air because usually that's like a really common motion to like just do a quick jump to get angle real quick and then fall back down. Yeah. Uh, so instead I like hit it and I float. Which there's a setting you can turn it off the auto stabilize. Uh, I'm not actually sure what button turns it on otherwise. Like do you have to zoom while you're in the air, I guess. I'm not Probably. sure. Probably. I kept it on whatever the default <laughs> there's was. There's too many buttons, man. I couldn't I couldn't <laughs> turn that off. Uh let me see here. Uh we got the did you get people with that charge Titan thrust melee basically shoulder charge? Did um, you kill anybody with it? I got a few kills. Uh, I had a funny sequence on Empire where I was on top tower and was looking out towards the outside area, and all of a sudden this dude just shoulder charges past me. He like because I took one step to the side while I was sniping, so I must have like just moved out of his charge. So the, <laughs> so the dude went flying past me, and then I ground pounded him on the bottom. Floor. <laughs> it was so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, oh, it was just super shit. like oh whoa, oh he charged okay. <laughs> he had have been so heated though, but yeah, I used it a couple times. I was trying to like a uh, charge and then sword, like charge, thrust, and then sword swing at people. Uh, but I couldn't tell if the charge was actually making me any faster than just sprinting because sprint is already so fast. That's one of the things that I noticed when I was, when I, the few couple of times I used it, I didn't kill anybody with it. The couple of times I, I, I used it, I was like, is this actually giving me a speed boost or no? Or nah? Or nah? I don't think it, <laughs> I don't think it was. <laughs> I don't think it was. So that was like, uh, I'm not, I don't feel like really using this. Yeah, I wasn't uh, sure if there's an advantage to just like sprinting and just punching the person in the face versus doing the charge. Because there's still a recovery time after you charge where you're, like, you're waiting for your weapon to come back up. Yeah. Uh, which I felt like was longer than just punching people. Uh, but it's hard to, ta hard to tell. Like, it's stuff where I would measure it out by frames. Um, and then let's talk about that ground pound. So I got three kills with the ground pound. One of which, uh, I got about six hits on people. Cause I tried it a couple times, but the very first, like Colin, the first hour, I had like no idea what you were talking about when you're like, dude, you have to hold melee in the air. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So, activating it for me for the first hour was like, I was like jumping and meleeing. Like, I would just single melee. So, I'd jump and then melee. Like, I was like, Colin, it's not activating. He's like, you got, dude, you got to hold it. And I was like, oh. So, uh, after I figured that out, I tried it on and off for the last, whatever, six, six, seven hours that I played. The best one, Colin, that I got was the double kill where you were in game with me and I was oh, just, yeah. or no, you were on Skype and uh, I was like, dude, I just got a double kill with the ground pound. And you're like, what? He's like, did you record that? I was like, yes, I was recording. <laughs> the stars have to so, align for that to happen because it doesn't, it doesn't kill outright. Like, that's to be hurt. Right. So uh, these two dudes were right on each other, too. They were, like, sandwiched, and then I just went, Phew. it was awesome. It was amazing. And I saw Sumi, I think she said, the ground pound is basically like teabagging someone. I feel like if you want to disrespectfully kill someone, you will ground pound them. Yeah. Every time we were, like, 4v1, I was trying to ground pound people. <laughs> just quit, dude. Just quit. Yeah. You're the last one in here. Let me ground pound you. Just quit. But the way I wanted to use it, the way I envisioned it in my mind was using it as like an escape or like to really like dramatically make an entrance into a room. Uh, but it really doesn't work that way at all because the long ass delay on both the cast and the finish. Like after you land on the ground, you're there for a while before you can pull up your gun and start shooting. Uh, so like even if you strip their shields, like if they if they have a teammate there, more often than not, I die before I can even finish the kill that I hit. Right. Uh, and is that it? We got clambering. What do you think about that? Uh, it was alright. I had some, like, consistency issues where, like, it wasn't grabbing ledges sometimes. Um, I had problems, like, jumping up to the window on Truth and the bases because it's curved outward. So, like, if you jump, then you just hit your head on the thing and you fall back down and it doesn't pull you up. So, like, I had that happen almost every time I tried to jump in that window. Uh, hmm. But besides that, like I just learned, I just started holding down the jump to do an auto grab instead of trying to time it, like as you hit the thing. Assume, <laughs> assume says her best disrespect. 
was a guy who got three shots on me, boosted around the corner, clambered up, then instantly prepared ground pound on doorway, then destroyed them with it. <laughs> That's nice. I was trying that too, like turn corners and catch people chasing. Yeah. That's going to be the best, no radar. With no radar, it'd be nice. Especially if you I also feel like yourself in a kind of weird spot, you know? I feel like ground pound actually will get a lot more, uh, you'll get a lot more kills with no radar with ground pound. I think you're going to get a lot more kills. Probably. Might just be better off just punching them. <laughs> Maybe. But you got to go for that disrespect. Thoughts on flinch? It felt like the old days. It feels to me. same as like reach. That's the one yeah. which I guess is always my comparison mark. Uh, and D-scope for that matter. Flinch and D-scope. Yeah. About the same. Uh, that's about it. That's about it. That's all I got, uh, really. Um, the last thing I wanted to uh, kind of talk about was, where is it? Oh, this is something that you and I both talked about while we were playing was the kill cam. Is <laughs> The fade to black is really, lot. The fade to black is really oh. jarring. So, look, Colin, for all the polish that you were talking about for the early access beta, I feel like the kill cam was definitely the least polished thing that that they showed off. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't just turn it off. It, it just, like, I actually, even by the time I was on the seventh hour, every time it went to kill cam, the kill cam replay, I was like, it, it was just so jarring. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. Like, it just didn't feel natural. So it seems like maybe they needed to delay it a little bit. Maybe they needed to to uh, give you like a, a better hesitation before it went into. I don't know what it was about it. It's but weird it on the back like, end too because there's no indication that you're about to spawn. Like about to no, respawn. There's no timer or like Halo's always had the beep, beep, beep. And then you spawn, right? Like right. That wasn't there either. It was just dead silence and all of a sudden you're in the game sometimes. Sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's slow. There's really no rhyme or reason to it, it felt like. But like that kind of stuff, I'm not really worried about because I know that'll get fixed up and polished. For it, launch. Yes, like that. I agree. There's no doubt in my mind that that will be changed for launch. Um. Oh, and one last thing before uh, we kind of move on to uh, Destiny stuff. And then the last thing should be pretty fast since we made this pretty much a, a all Halo. Uh, is uh, spectate. Spectate is pretty cool. Uh, I hopped into. A I couple thought it was matches. also. Yep. I watched a couple people. Um. I saw. Who did I watch? Giggle Monster actually. Um, I think he's a Twitch streamer, if I'm not mistaken, for Destiny. Anyway, I watched him, and uh, he was pulling off some real, like, <laughs> he was doing the uh, the stabilize, so he jumped yeah. up, he had a sniper, and uh, he was doming people, so it's pretty cool watching him do that. I wanted to be able uh, to turn off the, uh, like, the bottom part where it shows the nameplate. That was, like, my only great, like, you can hide the uh, controls on the right-hand side, but not the nameplate. So, I, one of the I, things, I wanted to make a montage of someone else's gameplay. You know what we're going to do, Colin? Oh, you know uh, what we're going to do? Viewer? It was casting. Yeah. Yep. So, Colin and I have been talking about doing, uh, I think we talked about it on Titanfall, <laughs> doing uh, subscriber and viewer casted streams. Titanfall was pretty late on theirs for us to be able to do that. <laughs> just, just a little bit late. <laughs> just, just a little bit late on private matches, much less spectating. Uh, but... What we're going to do, I think, uh, is spectate some of our uh, subs and do, like, little subscriber matches or leagues or whatever. And uh, having this option is going to be great for that. So I'm really uh, happy to see Spectator in Halo. Um, in for, general, I think you'll once. see a lot more from, like, the smaller, like, tournaments and online stuff. I think it'll be a lot more cool content. Yeah. So don't forget, guys, we're going to have this community stuff soon. I'm still going. <laughs> Almost done. All right. Last thing. Colin, did you change the topic? I can't. Destiny stats. Uh, so some of those questions, Colin, what were your thoughts on uh, the scuff and, the, and Halo? It's hard to say on the scuff. Like, verdict's still out for me. I mean, it's... It's objectively better, right? Like, it's basically just an Xbox One controller with extra shit. So it's hard for me to complain. Still uh, trying to gauge just how useful it's been for me, though. Uh, so we'll see. Side note, Razer needs to get on that Xbox One. They do. Um, there was a couple other questions in here that I remember. Something like, I think it was Armadilla 
asked uh, if Halo 5, if they don't give Halo 5 basically a um, old school playlist, is that going to uh, hurt the hardcore fans or would that make the game die? There's always all of this concern about the game dying. I don't feel like the game is going to die this time around because uh, 3 for 3 is, has said that, that they're going to be running the leagues and stuff. So that's going to help with uh, um, that's going to help with their ability to, I think, keep those people in stuck in that ecosystem and having a a uh, three four three basically sponsored tournament yeah, for the most part. That stuff's going to be there, right? Like, yeah. So that's what that was. What was missing, I think, when Halo Four is having a league, um, and then MLG kind of pushed those Halo guys out, but. Having a league or, or some type of support that's official uh, is going to keep those competitive guys in the loop and playing. And that's, as a result, going to keep a lot of those people that are in the mix, um, I would say from semi-pro to, to uh, beyond, in the, in the environment. And that's that X factor with whether or not the game is going to die or not. Um, but the traditional Halo playlist, yeah, sure, that'll get played. But honestly... For the hardcore players that play it, like the ones that I'm thinking about, the competitive guys, they're going to be playing what's going to make them money. Period. <laughs> so, no, they won't be on that shit. The whole game dying thing is just always funny because we're actually about to segue into Destiny numbers, uh, which a lot of people announced pretty much dead on arrival, much less saying that it was going to die really quickly. Uh, yet, they posted their numbers in the Bungie Weekly Update. Uh, it was the end of the year update, actually. Uh, yep. So they posted, they've had 13 million different players um, with made 23 million characters, like almost two a person. Uh, logged a total of 872 million hours on the game. It was funny because um, I actually had someone in my stream two days ago um, because they weren't playing uh, Destiny, and I was like, dude, Destiny is like one of the most popular games out right now. And he was like, says who? I was like, but you can just tell. Like, they don't even need to release numbers. You can tell by YouTube views. You can tell by their Reddit. You can tell by uh, their Twitch stream consistently being in the top 10 at this point, 50, top 10, 15. You can tell by uh, the just the number of people that you go, once you log into the game, the number of people still there. Like, it's easy to find a match. Like, it's so... It's so weird to me how people are so uh, oriented around like their belief that because they aren't doing something, that means everyone else must not be doing it. That's like crazy to me that somehow people think that about games. Yeah, like just because them and their friends didn't find the game still fun or didn't keep playing, like no one's playing anymore. So that, right. the one that I hate is like, uh, oh, this is still a thing. It's like, <laughs> of course, it's a thing. Like. <laughs> It sold 13 million copies. Of course, yes, it's definitely <laughs> still a thing. I saw it in the uh, I saw it in the sales for Christmas. People are gonna get it as Christmas gifts. It's still a thing. Yes, it's 67 hours per player, by the way, on average. Um, obviously, I'm always a little skeptical anytime like, a company releases their own numbers. Uh, but even if those are like ballpark close, it's still impressive. Yeah, that's that's damn impressive. As well as like uh, the numbers they released were really specific. Like they didn't actually say 13 million. They said. Twelve million eight hundred ninety-seven thousand three hundred fifty-three, like yes, all the way down to the exact number. So, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure they like, pulled it from some actual database. Pretty much like yeah, you guys said that the game was dead. Fuck you. These are our actual numbers. Yeah, pretty much. Um, let me find this stuff. I had released my stats as of my player stats. Interesting stuff here. I crossed thirty thousand kills. Uh, the exact number is 30,537, ranked number 117. On a Destiny Tracker? Yep. 117. For total kills? For total kills. Damn, that's a lot, man. Then uh, across all platforms or Xbox? Uh, it's probably just Xbox, pretty right? Pretty sure that's just Xbox. Uh, but I imagine PlayStation wouldn't knock me back too much further than that. Yeah. Assists, I'm number 163. I'm at 6,259. 
Uh, deaths also top one percent, two hundred number two hundred twenty nine at fifteen thousand two hundred sixty six. It's a whole lot of deaths. All that being said, I've maintained a two point zero KD uh, ratio across uh, all six subclasses, uh, or classes and subclasses, I should say. So my hunter. Uh, Titan and uh, Warlock. I didn't actually do the individual breakdowns across KD for those, uh, but nonetheless, having a 2.0 KD playing all those is pretty crazy. Um, let me see here. Where's that other stat I had? Uh, oh, so my um, my average kills per game across the three different classes. My Titan was the lowest at 18.19. My hunter was 20.09, and my warlock was 20.16. So you can probably draw your own correlations between your titan's ability to slay and uh, the other classes, but that's not a big difference, but it is something I think is, is worth noting. Uh, most kills with weapons. So this is crazy uh, seeing my weapon kills. Sniper kills, 6,093. Now listen to this drop-off. 6,093 sniper kills. 3,460 scout rifle kills. That's the next closest. I'm surprised you didn't <laughs> use assault rifle more. I thought the assault rifle was trash, dude. Didn't use that Soros, man. No, it was trash. I was whooping people, the Soros with the Mita. You just didn't get on the uh, Soros in time. Nah, I could have had my opportunity to buy it. I wanted, I wanted to... I wanted to uh, rip people up. 2,725 machine gun kills, 2,561 hand cannon kills, uh, 2,497 something kills. What would that be? I didn't put the, what, actually what that was. So hand cannon, scout. Oh, that's fusion rifle. Fusion rifle kills, 2,484 auto kills. And pulse was under 2,000 didn't matter terrible um let me see here i think that's all i ended up posting roughly 700 rocket kills and that's all i and then i gave some other thoughts about the game like uh you know i felt like my favorite map despite having dark below was uh shores of time uh, and, and then Twilight Gap, and then uh, Rusted Lands. I think a lot of their smaller maps are pretty good, but there's definitely some balance issues with uh, maps and game modes. For instance, Blind Watch is really, uh, <laughs> if you get BC for Blind Watch and Control, like you basically get to auto win. Yeah. Uh, if you play the opposite side, if you play that uh, the outside portion where where the uh, the silos are on on Clash then that's basically a free win. Uh, it's some really interesting, uh, you know, balance issues with how the game modes play out. Um, but I don't really feel like they have given much love to the Crucible side. I think they could act, uh, actually, it would actually do them very uh, good if they added more maps. Because uh, the Dark Below maps, they only added three. Sky Shock is hot garbage. It's really bad. Like, really bad. Um, Cauldron is, is decent and Pantheon is also pretty decent. So uh, having two more extra maps, uh, one of the other two, I don't even think, I, I don't know if they put in control on those map, maps. Really? I haven't seen them play. I mean, we haven't had the option to play them on control, so I don't know if they flow well. Pantheon seems like it would be a great CTF map, which is I'm hoping <laughs> they add that as an option. Uh, but the, the funny thing is, like, the closer we get into Halo 5 and then next year by February, there's a lot of games coming out that are, that are going to eat into my Destiny time. So uh, I I would say that the game is is basically on its last legs uh, for me playing a whole lot, which is... It's a lot of gameplay, though. It is. I played a whole lot, man. So there are my Destiny stats. Uh, game is... is uh, is a fun experience for me. I, I I think I tweeted out that I feel like if Shadowrun had a spiritual spiritual successor, it was Destiny. There's a lot of elements I feel like are are have some overlap. So, I love Shadowrun. By the way, fun game. Colin, you disagree? <laughs> I think I like it all. 
they're not I said spiritual successor I don't think they're one to one I don't like it all oh, look I, I just, <laughs> the most casualized TDM shooter ever versus like the round based stuff that uh, Shadowrun did with the magic and the purchasing four rounds and like counter strike style like not even close there's a lot of weapons in there. You can compare some of the uh, abilities, I guess. But that's what that's, I was thinking about. It's a stretch. Ability standpoints, man. Not, not even spiritual close. successor. Not even close. <laughs> spiritual successor. Uh, Skyless, Skyless Destiny, Destiny, Destiny review. review. He hates Destiny. He's not. Uh, he doesn't like Destiny at all. I've already voiced my thoughts on Destiny and all the stuff they do wrong. <laughs> and the stuff they do right I've also acknowledged that what uh, <laughs> what questions do you guys have we could go to Q&A yeah. side note next week episode 100 yeah we're going to try to get some, some folks on Hopefully everybody got their good Halo fix in. We offered en enough opinions on the on the beta, so you got a pretty clear indication of how we felt about the game. Yeah, let's see. It goes live next Monday. Yeah. For the full thing. Yep. Although they're I'll be back home. they're doing like weekly updates, I believe, to the playlist and stuff. So that first week might actually just end up being Slayer on those two maps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I, think I heard like week two or three is gonna be uh like pro pro settings, like BR starts no radar. That'll be lovely. Yeah. Is it just gonna be arena multiplayer beta? It's just four before you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so many people are gonna be like getting torn up. <laughs> people are already getting torn up in early access. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Uh, you know a funny story we played uh speaking of like Titanfall stuff that we talked about earlier <laughs> we played uh the producer of uh Drew McCoy oh yeah DK05 DK05 we tore him up he left after a game too well, you guys do a best of frag logic that's really hard man that's a lot of shows uh when we do a best of frag I don't think so well, I think we're going to do an end of the year discussion about games this year. That's definitely going to be a thing. Probably be a long show. Uh, I plan on doing some giveaways and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know all else I can tell you other than that. Colin might have some own, his own ideas about what he wants to do as well. Best of Fight clip number one is me laughing from the, uh, that was the face cam. <laughs> yeah, what sucks is uh, like going through 90 plus episodes that are like, it's probably like 130 hours of just talking. So like there's no like high marks that you can just find in an episode real quickly. You have to just listen to it all. There's no way. Yeah. The funny thing is as we get into the new year, uh, we... Loosely talked about Frag Logic 2.0, but uh, it, it's probably going to be a lot different when we put these over on on Twitch. I mean, on YouTube um, versus Twitch. I think Twitch is going to continue to get the the full show, but I don't know if we're going to post the full show over on YouTube rather than going with the new condensed format. So it'll be interesting to see how people like it. Uh, uh, last week, did you guys talk about Capcom Cup 2015 500,000 prize pool? We did briefly. Very briefly. I only watched a little bit of it, so I just can't really say much. Want to see the clip where Arctic tried to go with historic angle about <laughs> game about? <laughs> I, believe, I believe the Arctic. word was, what year was this? This was like the 1500s, right? <laughs> 1500s. Well, we're looking at like a, a sky fortress in the clouds. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> has that game come out, by the way? I don't think it has. 
I don't think it has yet. I can't wait to play it though. Are we gonna give our best and worst games of the year? Uh, maybe next week. We'll see. To be honest, this year's been kind of a shitty year for game releases. Has I was been... expecting to still be playing Titanfall at this time. I was expecting to. No, look, we made some pretty. We played a lot of we Titanfall. Some re... We did. We played some mini pretty. Uh, right. I'm sorry. I was expecting After... playing playing tournaments this time of year. Yes, yeah, I think you're correct. Now, look, in our videos, if you go back and watch them when we were talking about Titanfall, I re remember us saying I felt like the game that was going to take us off as a team was going to be Destiny. That's true. I think I remember us saying that. Which was equally disappointing as far as the competitive stuff goes. Or even like any kind of structured stuff. Stopping pubs all day. Game of the year for me is Halo 5 Beta. Dang, sue me. Game of the year for me is still going to be TF, probably. But we'll wait until next week. All the, all the details. It's Team Fortress. <laughs> it's not Team Fortress. It's Titanfall. It's in TF. It's Titanfall. <laughs> I don't know why you're even I mean, trying to put some suspense between now and next week. As if it's going to be anything uh, other than Titanfall. I'll you look you did play the... a lot of Destiny, so like, I guess you could theoretically say Destiny. But you know that it's not the best game of the year. Deep down in your heart of hearts. I don't know that. <laughs> Deep down in your heart of hearts, you know that it was not the best game of the year. Uh, I'm going to look through this year and look at all the different games we played. It's, it's Titanfall. I'm going to look at all the games we played this year. I, you know what I need to do before, before next Tuesday is I need to play Shadow of Mordor. I need to play. Did Infamous Second Son come out this year? I don't know if it did or not. I need to play that, and I need to play some more GTA Five. It's, it's Titanfall. <laughs> I wasn't even saying those is those, those options. I was just saying that I need to play those games. All you need is so, best and worst. That's already taken care of. So you have to find your worst. Uh, what's the worst game I played this year? We can't be talking about this right now. <laughs> I think we're good to actually wrap up. There haven't been many questions. All right, we can sign off. Oh, I'm gonna let you get it. Let me get it again. It's like three, yeah. three weeks in a row. You're hosting. Becoming a trend. You're hosting. You're the Don. <laughs> <laughs> Skyless the Dawn. All right, I'll close it out. So this was Fragile Logic, episode number 99. We'll be back next week with episode number 100. And everyone have a Merry Christmas, or whatever you celebrate. See, I already said it. See, I should have said Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Everyone have Happy Holidays. And a nice break off work or school or whatever you have. Get some games in. And we'll be back next week. That's going to be... What is that? Is that... Okay, it's the 30th. Not quite New Year's <laughs> Eve. Koopa wants me to upload that goggle gameplay. Goggle gameplay? <laughs> I, I don't like putting people out like that. Yeah. So we'll be back next week, the 30th, to close out the year. And close out episode, the first 100, first century. No, first, it's the, <laughs> it's the centennial episode. Centennial. Centennial <laughs> episode of Frag Logic. <laughs> And close out the year with a bang. So see you guys next week. It should be a special show for us. Uh, and hope to see all you guys live. Don't watch oh, on YouTube. You? Set your times. Be here live next week. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night. Have a nice holidays. All right.